Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of premium quality guitar, bag, and camera straps, handmade in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Check out their website to order your own custom creation and play in style. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. In this video, we're going to follow the modification process of this 1968 Fender Basement Amplifier. Uh, in this video, we're going to turn this thing into a real monster. So I hope you guys stick around. Um, and this is how it arrived when I unpacked it. This is the front panel, which isn't the end of the world. I mean, this can be put back on. But I don't know how much of this damage was sustained during chipping. Um, but it looks to me like it's had some issues. It looks like maybe someone pulled the old logo off of it I don't know looks like maybe they did that they pulled the old logo off it's at one point and just ripped the whole back side through I don't know I mean this could be this could be rebuilt you could just take this trim off of here um, the strip edge trim and the cloth and you could put it on another piece of board and probably you know probably fix that fairly easily you could probably also order it online order a new piece um, but this is a baseman from probably 1968 by the look of the drip edge and I think the customer said he wants to do some modifications but I'll go back over my emails and correspondence and see exactly what he wants to do but let's let's get this thing up on the bench and figure out what he wants done that's probably the tubes right there in that bag so we'll get the tubes out and see if they survive the trip and see what the customer wants done. Okay, so let me read from the email I got to, from the customer. It said, uh, this Fender Basement Silverface is new to me. I ended up with it somewhat unplanned after some late night over enthusiastic bidding on eBay and had it sent directly to you to save shipping fees. So he, he hasn't ever really seen it in person. Uh, he began looking at base amps because of my last gain mod video and I'll put a link to that down in the description or in a comment or something if you want to go look at that one. One of my more popular videos. And he goes on to say it uh, it was described as having all original caps so he's, he's sure that it's going to need new capacitors power cord, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to need a complete overhaul. He says basically he just wants it working correctly and then after that he says uh, whatever attention I might want to spend on thinking about gain mods is something he'd pay for and it's my call. Totally dependent on your level of inspiration and time availability. So this is the kind of customer that I like. He's totally flexible. He's pretty much given me free reign to kind of do what I want with this old thing. And that is a beautiful thing to me because I'll be able to get in here and uh, do some interesting things, make an interesting video, and hopefully get him a really interesting amplifier that inspires me and hopefully will also inspire him. Okay, so here are the guts of this basement. And this thing looks extremely original. Um, in fact, I don't, I don't know if I see anything really that is not original with the possible exception of that wire right there, which you can see uh, is a bit different, and that white wire up there, which is a little bit different, connected to what what looks like an original Mallory-type capacitor, though. So, I don't know. I'm not sure on that. There were a few different versions of this basement, a couple at least, and I'm not sure exactly yet which one this is. Uh, it's AB165 or AA165 perhaps, or it could be another one. I found out later on this is actually the slightly more rare AC568. We will look into some of the differences a little later on. It takes me a while to kind of figure this out, so I thought I would put a note here. Um, and also of note, you'll notice that this one had the black lines, the vertical lines on the front silver face. Um, and I think some later ones started to phase out the blue Mallory capacitors and had all of the brown turd capacitors in place. There are a couple of 150 ohm 7 watt resistors from cathode to ground here which are I'm, I guess they're serving as shunt resistors for measuring. We do have the fixed bias here. Uh, we have a couple of uh, little capacitors here too. Um, these look like point zero zero twos going from let's see what is this pin that's pin five, so that'll be uh, that'll be grid one, 
But yeah, I'm, I am sort of confused though why we're going. Okay, we're tying in. We're going through a. We're coming over here to pin one, which is a no connection, and then we're going through a 220k resistor, which I guess is serving as a grid stopper over to uh, pin five, which is the grid, and then we have this. 0 0.002 capacitor to ground which is really going to be bleeding off some highs so the first thing I would do to make this more guitar friendly obviously is, is to remove these two capacitors right there those uh, really have no business in a guitar amp all right well, I know I skipped a lot but there are the new capacitors installed uh, these dropping resistors all look pretty good to me uh, none of them appear to have been hot at any point and uh, I think they're fine and can stay uh, I'll give them a good measure just to be sure drop some silicone underneath uh, all of these just to keep them from rattling against the board but uh, there are those finished so let's move on to the power cord before we flip this chassis over, we want to desolder this point right here because that is uh, that is the death cap, and we may as well just go ahead and desolder it. Okay, on power cords, I just like to just clip them off and uh, go ahead and get the cord out of the way. And basically, from here, we just want to do demolition. I've already removed this side. We'll go ahead and remove this side as well, um, and we want to pretty much remove this this whole switch and I think I think with this amp I might like to experiment with putting something here because uh, we do have the space for something that could be kind of cool you know maybe a negative feedback control something like that on the back or a presence control perhaps uh, just or maybe even a mid-range control I don't know something to something to some little secret something you know to give it pizzazz Man, yes, I know. Don't yell at me. It's blasphemy, right? So there's that going, and like I said, we may uh, we may use that for something. Okay, so I skipped ahead just a little bit. The power cord is all complete, so that's all wired up. I've changed a few of these capacitors, uh, including the one for the bias right there. I'm leaving these. Um, diodes because they test fine and they're RCA and I think they're going to be rock solid they're like 400 volts 3 amps so they're I mean I think they're fine also changed a couple of these uh, bypass capacitors over here that's on the base channel uh, and on the output uh, now the output of this is kind of kind of a strange one um, these two capacitors they were coming off of the grids pins five to ground so we had pin five to ground here and pin five to ground here or wherever right there point double oh two capacitors so they were definitely bleeding off a bunch of highs uh, and that's probably a remnant from when they were trying to make this into a very very clean output base amp um, which it's a basement so it was you know supposed to be a base amp so that makes sense in terms of a bass amp, but makes very little sense in terms of a guitar amp. So those have been removed. This 5 microfarad capacitor here is interesting because it was going from it was going from the cathode of this output tube to the cathode of this output tube. I am certain that it has something to do with uh, balancing the output tubes, I'm sure. I, I don't know. It's it's a it's a new one on me, but no, it's not polarized. I don't recall having seen a small value capacitor like this from one cathode of an output tube to the other cathode of an output tube. I do know this; it's not necessary to get the sound that we're after, so that has been removed. Uh, but it's interesting nonetheless. It would definitely be interesting to know any thoughts you guys might have on why that was there. Uh, please comment below and uh. I'd be interested on this in discussing that. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we've pretty much got this thing serviced for the most part. Um, I haven't done any cleaning or anything like that yet, but we do have the all of the main stuff done. Now what we're going to do is start on the modifications for the normal channel. And the first thing we're going to want to do is come in here and um, 
probably change up our tone stack capacitors. Uh, but the first thing we also need to do is we're basically going to start at the input and just work our way through. So um, right after the uh, input, which comes here, we're going to follow this wire, which goes underneath the board and then comes out here and goes to this tube. Now we're going to change this so so that we don't end up in a situation where we're coming out of uh, this point and then coming way back over here and then going way to the output again. So we're going to move this over to here. For those of you unsure what I'm pointing at right there, uh, that is an unused gain stage. So basically it's a one half of a 12AX7 that is in these late 60s basement that was never used for anything so you can actually up the gain of one of these amps quite considerably by using this and that's what we intend to do here and then then we will come back and put this probably as our third stage the other thing we're going to do while we're at it since we're going to be increasing the gain of this channel also uh, we're going to go ahead and, sh and add a shielded wire here in place of this wire that's just going to keep the noise down all right, we've gotten a lot done with this amplifier, but before we go any further, I want to do some recap. Um, let's look at some schematics just for one second. This is a this is a Fender Basement AB165. Um, we have looked at this schematic before when I did another Fender Basement uh, mod job, and one thing you'll notice about the uh, f the Fender Basements from this era you know, kind of the black face into silver face era, is that they had their tone stack uh, after the first stage. So that's relatively early. Uh, if you were to look at, by contrast, a, a Marshall, like JCM 800, they have a, uh, they have a volume pot after the first stage and after a little bit of tone shaping network, but they don't have their tone stack until much later in the circuit with a master volume. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing here is adding, uh, moving this tone stack a little bit later in the circuit and also adding a master volume. Probably, I probably will not add the master volume on this empty spot right there, but instead probably will, I'm thinking about at least, getting rid of one of these input jacks. Now that's going to preclude... Uh, you from being able to plug into this and you know come out with a cord here and go into the other channel but you probably wouldn't want to do that anyway because it wouldn't really enhance the tone very much uh, seeing as this this channel is going to be very marshally and this channel is going to be more or less a stock basement channel for cleans so what the way you would probably want to run this is to get something like a Morley ABY pedal something like that uh, keep you know put run it into the front end uh, run a cable out of that pedal into this channel, run a cable out of that pe uh, pedal into this channel. So you'd be able to switch this channel, this channel, or both if you wanted to. But yeah, I think we'll make that into a master volume or a gain knob. Okay, so, so the plan is to remove this jack right here. So we need to separate it from this other jack because their grounds are actually uh, stuck to get, well, not the grounds, but the uh, the output is stuck together here in the middle and off of that are our, our resistors, our input resistors, and off of this should come the input onto this first stage. Uh, but we're going to eliminate one of these input resistors and the rest of this and we have to separate these. So let's get to that. So, something like Something like that. Oh my god, not pliers! <laughs> so there's that jack gone. Hang on, let me think about this. We might want to go to like a 47k or maybe even a 33k because that'll be about half of this value. There we go. <laughs> That's more like it. Okay, so we've gotten a little bit further on this abnormal channel input. Uh, what we want to do is solder these two together. Um, and what that's going to do is it's basically going to prevent these from uh, moving in relation to one another. Speaking of spirits, 
Okay, so there's our input wire now, and it's a shielded wire. I changed this because we're going to be adding a lot of gain to this channel, and we want to cut down noise as much as humanly possible, and also because the original wire runs all the way across this board. And now it's going slightly further also. It's going to this uh, tube that uh, originally had nothing attached to it. So um, we'll be using this gain stage, this half of this 12AX7, uh, then it comes into this tube over here. But the thing is, I don't want to drill any extra holes in this. Just in case sometime in the future, if somebody ever wants to put this back to stock for whatever reason, they will have the option of being able to do that. I just don't, you know, I don't like to drill in vintage amps uh, if I can keep from it. And as of right now, nothing has been butchered or hacked or anything like that. We haven't cut any holes or drilled any holes, and I'm trying to keep it that way. Let's pull out another a piece of this shielded wire and then we'll run back this way and uh, come to our control. This is also going to be a really good example of the benefits of repurposing a wire like this. I think I got this uh, shielded wire either from a Hammond organ that I gutted uh, and saved all of these pieces or um, this may have came from uh, a Valco Gretsch amplifier um, that I pulled a bunch of wires out and uh, modified but instead of throwing these pieces away you keep them because you use them in things like this so it's kind of repurposing the wire okay when doing shielded um, cable runs like this you want to make sure that you only ground one end so in this instance I'm only going to ground uh, this end to this side which is going to be the this is the ground bus side anyway that's going to prevent me from setting up ground loops because if you ground this somewhere over here and then ground this end over here uh, you have two different paths uh, for the ground through this chassis for the ground to kind of set up a loop and what that's going to do is it's going to introduce noise so we, we don't want that so we went, want to make sure we avoid it and the way to do that is to cut all of this ground wire off and just leave the uh, leave the positive lead attached I've skipped ahead just a little bit I've added this terminal strip right here I've got the cathode of this stage biased with a 1k resistor the JCM 800 JMP calls for like an 820 uh, resistor an 820 ohm which is similar to some of the earlier basemen uh, on this stage, but I've gone with a 1K because it's fairly similar and I've had good results in the past. This is all correct. I've actually returned this wire because I was running it. I moved this wire over to here, but this is all the tone stack network right here anyway. So um, I've been, in order to move it later on down the stream, I've moved this back over here. So now this is connected with the tone stack. So here's what we have essentially. We have the 100K resistor, which is this is the plate resistor, which is supplying voltage to this plate. Uh, we have another plate here, which is being supplied here. Um, but we want to go through and figure out what is supplying what. So we've got uh, this wire, which comes over here, this uh, white wire, and it comes up underneath and attaches here to this 100k also which is supplying another half of a 12ax7 those two are together uh, on the same supply which is coming in on this blue wire right down here so that wire is the supply wire for both of those uh, but we have this one now also um, and if you follow this blue wire over here You'll see it goes to this point, and there's two more here. So we have one, two, three on this blue wire, but we only have two 
on this white wire. So we're going to steal, we're going to come off of this point here and supply this half of this 12AX7. Okay, I think I've gotten all the changes done that I want to get done, at least preliminar preliminarily here. Um, and we've got it plugged into the Variac, and we're dialing up slowly. I'm about halfway up. I already have some sound here at my test speaker, and I can tell that my gain control is working. It would appear that these controls are working okay. Uh, we'll see. The bass control uh, may need some adjustment. Let's plug a, let's plug a guitar in here and see what... Uh, what we got. couple things I can already tell that that's uh, got a lot of gain so far I think I need to come into the tone stack and probably change the values of at least a couple of these pots uh, also I would like to change the fixed mid-range resistor um, to express a little bit more mid-range a little more growl all right things are still coming along pretty nicely one more thing I want to do this bright switch is fairly useless uh, with this particular tone stack when you kick it into bright it's just way too bright we're going to remove this bright switch but we're going to turn it into something else and I'll show you what we're going to do this wire was here on the wiper of the volume uh, and it's going to one side of this switch the other side's going to a I think it's a 500 picofarad capacitor and we also removed this wire this is one mod that you can do without changing anything else if you wanted to. You could change this bright switch to do something else. We're actually going to change it to switch the mid-range. Rather than the, let's see, what was it? I think it's like a 6.7K resistor uh, as the fixed mid-range. I've changed it to a 15K. And then come over here, we want to run a wire from this same point. Okay, so we, we want to go from this same leg of the base pot that our uh, fixed mid-range resistor is connected to and we want to solder that directly to the switch over here wait for that to solidify and tuck this all up under here you'll notice I'm using as much of this old cloth wire as I can okay now what we want to do is we want to come off the other side of the switch with a second 15k resistor and we're going to take that, let's see, uh, we're going to take that to ground. So right here on this, this leg of the volume pot right here should be a good spot. Okay, so what that has done is that has created a, a mid-range switch. So instead of a bright switch, now it, it will switch the mid-range from a 15K to two 15Ks in parallel to ground, and what that's going to do is basically cut that in half, so it'll be about 7.5K. So it'll be like taking the 
uh, mid-range potentiometer from like you know six or seven down to like four you know so you'll have that kind of a flip-flop uh, and in a situation where you have no mid-range control this gives you a little bit of control where you can at least cut the mid-range or boost it and again you can do this mod you can do this particular mod on uh, your basement amplifier just as it is. You don't have to change anything else, and you can change that fixed resistor. And you can experiment. You can go with like a 10K. Yeah, something you can do uh, on your basement without doing all these other mods. All right, I went ahead and removed this 500 picofarad bright cap that was on the back of the, uh, the gain knob that I installed. It just was a little bit bright, so I want to experiment with pulling that out of there. We'll see how it goes. I may put it back in, too. I'm not really sure yet. But I want to pull it out because I want to have a little bit more flexibility uh, via some negative feedback control. And what I'm going to do is use this existing hole that we created back here when we removed that switch for the ground. And we're going to put a negative feedback control in back here so you'll be able to reach back behind the amp and have some control over uh, sort, sort of a presence-based negative feedback. I'm not sure if I'm going to straight up follow like a Marshall um, presence control because their presence control is just a, you know, it's it's got a 5K potentiometer, a 4700 uh, resistor and a capacitor here, um, and it also utilizes a resistor here, 100K. And just for comparison's sake, here's an AB165 schematic, and we see here the negative feedback uh, comes off the output and has a 47K resistor in series with a 0.1 capacitor uh, that gets tied in right here to the grid of the 12AT7 phase inverter. So, you know, a lot different than the Marshall. So, yeah, coming off of pin 7 of our phase inverter tube, if we follow the wire, we've got the 0.1 capacitor right here. And then on the other side of that is a 22K resistor. And if we measure from there to ground, we will probably find a ground connection. We're going to want to lift that ground connection. Problem is, that ground connection will be hidden under the board. So going from there to ground is a dead short circuit. So that definitely is ground. So those are the two components that I'm looking for. So I need to find how that is being grounded. I'd say there's probably a wire from here over to here. Okay, let's see if we can see that where this ground connection is going by lifting the board. <clears throat> Hopefully we can get it up far enough to, to inspect it. This is probably my least favorite thing to do when messing around with amplifiers is lifting boards. I hate lifting boards probably more than just about anything else. Everybody has their little things that they hate and that is probably mine. Lifting boards, never fun. Especially if you have to take a bunch of things off to get it lifted up. Oh gosh, it's never, never a good time. So we'll just lift it up as far as we can and uh, that should be enough So we're gonna have to have a mirror. Kind of hard to tell what we're looking at. We're going to have a, a big space here before we get to a connection in the middle, and it's that one. And then we have a wire running this way and over. Uh, where's it going? It's got to be going to there. That connection right there, I'll just suck all the solder out. And then I'll be able to reach under there and pull that wire. I've almost got it. There it is. Well, this is pretty absurd. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this. I'm just going to cut it off right here and then cap it. It would probably be fine even if I didn't bother capping it, but might as well. I'll just prevent it from shorting anything out. I'll just leave it dangling there. That'd be fine. Okay, so here actually is the feedback resistor right here. This looks like it is probably an AC568 baseman. 
Yeah, that's definitely what we have here. We have an AC 568. You can see the 150 ohm resistors on the output. Then on the feedback, we have there's our little there's our small 100 picofarad capacitor around that 47k. There's our 0.1. Yeah, so that makes more sense. This is a AC 568 version of the baseman. The wire from the negative feedback comes here to this point. Uh, we're going to remove this resistor, this capacitor, and this capacitor. Let's go ahead and get those out of our way. All right, so there are those components removed. Okay, we need a 100K resistor to go from this point over to that point right there. Okay, also coming off of this former ground point for the phase inverter, we're going to need the 5K pot and also a 4700 to ground. Here's our 100K resistor. Uh, this side of the 100K is going to the uh, to the output. So the feedback is coming in here through the 100K to this point, going through the 5K pot, uh, back over to this point. Uh, we also have the this uh, 4700 ohm resistor to ground and we have this point one to ground from here so we were able to use the spots that were already provided on the board uh, to install our Marshall style presence control so yeah so let's fire this thing up uh, now and see where this has gotten us I think we're getting pretty damn close to demo time all right I just plugged it in briefly to test it out and make sure everything's working properly and it is and I believe we are ready to go with this thing so let's run down through the changes that were made uh, coming in the input, we have one 33K resistor into the first stage. We added a shielded cable uh, to get us over there. Um, we moved our first stage from this point here over to the unused uh, 12AX7 half over here. Uh, we came out of that with a uh, .002 capacitor uh, through the 100K resistor and uh, then on to the leg of our pot and then back to the grid of the next stage which is here uh, we bias this stage we have a 25 microfarad capacitor and we have a 1k resistor on the bias um, we had to supply it so well it ha already still had its supply we did supply this one over here with 100k that came off of right there we added this strip uh, to, to accommodate our plate resistor for this stage over here uh, and also to accommodate for a ground point for our bias on this second stage uh, coming out of that stage we come to this point and then we got get into the Marshall style tone stack with a uh, 500 picofarad capacitor uh, 2.02 .02 capacitors for the base and mid-range. We changed our fixed mid-range value. Everything else on the Marshall is pretty much the same on the tone stack. Except for the base control, which we changed to a 500K potentiometer. Uh, but as we know, we have no mid-range control. So what we did was we added a 15K resistor, uh, and then we paralleled that with this switch here so that we have the choice of a 15k uh, or a seven and a half k effectively to ground we removed a couple of the capacitors from this output if you'll recall we left these 150 ohm resistors in place i didn't see much of a need to remove them to be honest we have we replaced our capacitor on the bias just to make sure we have a good capacitor in that position uh, uh, we added a Marshall style presence control here with the 5k pot oh yeah on this first stage as well just to speak a little bit about the bias we rebiased it here's our bias uh, bypass capacitor for that stage and also our bias resistor for that stage down there we um, biased it the same as a JCM 800 on the first on its first stage which is a 2.7 K and a 0.68 microfarad capacitor went and replaced our capacitors on down upstream here for our uh, first channel as well and let's see, I think that's pretty much it.
So that concludes our video on this 1968 Fender Basement with an abnormal channel. I have thoroughly pissed off my wife, my neighbors, all of my friends with this thing. <laughs> In fact, I have no more friends because of it. Um, but it's going to head back to its owner. And for now, we'll see y'all later.